Hey guys, what's up? This is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to host multiple websites on a single Apache server. Specifically, we're going to be looking at having multiple WordPress websites on the Apache server. Don't worry if you're not going to use WordPress. The same concept still applies regardless of whatever type of application you're trying to host. So let's hop on into it. Right here, I already have two websites, site1.xyz and site2.xyz hosted on the same server. For all you know, I could be lying though. Let's just do a quick ping to see if they are indeed on the same IP address. So we'll ping site1.xyz. That comes back with this IP address and we'll ping site2.xyz and it comes back with the same exact IP address. Well, that's great, but I wanna actually go through the steps of setting up the both of these websites. Actually, let's set up a third website on the same IP address. So let's log in via SSH to this IP address, which by the way, if you're interested, uh, the, these websites are hosted on a Linode VPS, virtual private server. Whoops, I did not spell SSH wrong. Or I did not spell SSH right. Um, yeah, these are hosted on Linode, one click installs of a LAMP server, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. If you wanna learn how to do that, I'll put a video in the description and somewhere on this video that you're watching right now. Okay, so we're on the server, we're logged in as root. And the first thing I wanna do is just check out the var www directory, which is where um, most, by default, most websites are, all the files for the websites are living. And you can see right here, I have site one and site two. And inside here we have, let's just look in site one, we have a WordPress directory. In that WordPress directory, we have all the basic WordPress files. So let's go ahead and repeat that. We have site one, site two. Let's make a directory called site3.xyz. We'll go into that folder, go into site3.xyz. There's nothing there because we just created the folder. And what we wanna do is get the latest version of WordPress on our computer. And you can do that on, on this server. And you can do that with wget wordpress.org slash latest dot tar dot gz. That's gonna pull down that archive file. And what we wanna do next is to unpack that archive. So we're gonna type, type in tar dash xzvf in the name of that archive. That's gonna unpack everything into a folder called WordPress. And actually remove the archive file and go into the WordPress directory and you'll see those same set of files. We'll do some configuration in here in a bit. But first I wanna set up our database. We can do that with MySQL. And this is of course, again, assuming that you have a LAMP server, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, all those basic web hosting technologies installed on your server. So just type in MySQL if you're root you won't have to type in a password, but if you're not root, then you might have to do the username and a password. So here we're in the MySQL command prompt. I'm gonna use my cheat sheet over here and copy and paste the command to create our database. So we'll go through this. Create database named WP underscore site underscore site three. We're gonna use the default character set of UTF-8, collate UTF-8 underscore Unicode underscore CI. So that looks good, hit enter to execute that. We have now created that database and let's make a user for that database and give him some privileges, him or her. So you can type grant all on this database dot star, which means all tables on this database to this user, as long as he's on the local host, which is you know this IP address not coming from externally somewhere, identified by this password which is comically unsecure PW. Okay, so we'll execute that. That looks good. And the last thing we wanna do is to flush the privileges. So you can type flush privileges, semicolon, hit enter. And that's all we need to do for the database. We now have a empty database ready to go, ready to hook up to WordPress. So let's take care of that next. In here, again, we have our WordPress configuration files. What we wanna do is copy this, where is it? The WordPress config sample.php file. And that's just there for you to like get started. We wanna make a copy of that and make our actual WordPress config file. So we're gonna copy the sample into a file called wp-config.php. 
go ahead and do that and then open the file after you're done with that. So I'm gonna use the Vim text editor in this case. Um, if you need help with Vim, I'll have a tutorial for you on that. So just click in one of the corners up here and we'll go down to this MySQL settings section and we wanna fill out a couple of these pieces of information with the values that we just provided to the database. So our, pa our, our database is WP underscore site three. Our user is WP underscore site three underscore user. Our password is that unsecure PW and we can leave everything else the same. The only other thing we wanna change in this file is the, the, uh, the salt section here. And this is just some extra security, which I'm not gonna go into explaining, but basically remove those default values, copy this URL that they give you here, and this is gonna paste it into a web browser, and this is gonna give you um, some random characters for all of these different values and all we're gonna do is go back into the terminal and paste those in where those default values were. So you can save this file and go back to the command line. And now we have basically linked up the MySQL database to the WordPress install. So they should all be working. We'll test that out in a bit, but let's take care of the web server aspect of this, the Apache aspect of this setup. We can do that by going into the etc apache2 directory. And in here you'll see the basic install of Apache. Let's go into the sites available directory. And here you'll see I have my site one configuration file and my site two configuration file. Let's take a look at the site one configuration file. It's a very simple file. There's no optimization security, anything like that. It's just defining this virtual host on port 80 the server name, which is site1.xyz, is the domain name. This could be google.com, example.com, that's where that goes. And then the document root is at var www site1.xyz slash WordPress. So that is where we just saw that, where we just came from on our file system. So, and we'll just look at site two quick. It's gonna be the exact same thing, except everything is changed from site one to site two. So for our third website what i'm going to do is copy site2 and make a new file called site3.conf and all we have to do in site3.conf is change all instances of site2 to site3 everywhere in this file so now we have a file with our server name of site3.xyz and our document root at this file system path so go ahead and save that and the next thing i want to do is just real quick, uh, I'll back out of here, the site's available. So there's these two directories, oops, cd, dot, dot, okay. So there are these two directories, there's the sites available directory and the sites enabled directory. So right now we have these sites available. We have site one, site two, and site three, but we have only enabled site one and site two. So in order to enable site three, we have to use the a2en site command, which is the Apache 2 enable site command. And we're just gonna type in site3.conf and that looks good. It says we'll have to run this command to enable that, um, that ch configuration change, but let's just double check in here in sites enabled. And we should now, yep, we now see site three in here. So let's go ahead and uh, reload the Apache 2. And if we get out of here and open up a new tab, I think we should be ready to go to this website, site3.xyz. And there it is, we have a fresh installation of WordPress. We'll call this site three, the username admin, uh, the password, that's fine. I'll just copy that onto my clipboard, put in my email here, tony at tonyteaches.tech. Uh, this is not going to be a permanent website, so I'll click that and we'll log in. So we got admin, the password, log in, and there we go. We have our WordPress admin dashboard. I'm going to go into the default sample post that they have here and change it from their hello world to welcome to site three, just for consistency. 
and we'll go back out to the actual website. There you go. We have site3.xyz. Welcome to site3. We have site2, site1, all on the same hosting platform, all on the same IP address. We'll, we'll configure that or we'll confirm that one last time. We'll ping site3.xyz and we should see that same exact IP address. And we do, which is perfect. That's what we set out to do. Guys, if you have any questions about hosting multiple websites on Apache, let me know in the comments below. If something wasn't clear, don't, don't hesitate to ask. I'll be more than happy to help you out. That's what I'm here for. That's what this channel is all about. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you do, I will see you in the next one. Okay, guys, one last thing that I thought would be helpful in this video is to show you some of the behind the scenes that I failed to mention. So this is my Linode dashboard. I have the IP address that we were working at. This is the server that I have hosted site one, site two, and site three on. So that's where that came from. And then over here, I have the domain names that I'm using. So I own all of these domain names. Um, I got them from Namecheap and site1.xyz. Let's go just look at that for a second here. If you click on manage, you'll see that um, the name servers I'm using is the basic DNS servers, which you can find under this tab here. And you'll see that all I did was I pointed the A record for the default website, which is just site1.xyz at that IP address. And I did the same thing for the www version of the website at that same IP address. So I, I, I'm just anticipating some questions in the comments below. So that's why I wanted to go over how you link your actual domain name to that IP address and where that IP address came from. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one.